Oh, hey, Creature, he sent me a video. Whoa, that sounds interesting. 15 agonizing minutes later. Oh, wow. The puny 16 million subscriber YouTube mortal doesn't actually know how to prove if something's a computer or not. Man, that was a waste of my time. And I'm freaking immortal, so that says something. Turtle mortal, stop it. Hello, internet. Welcome to compute. Stop. To computer the. No, stop. Computer theory. Stop. No, no, stop. Stop it. You're not doing that, you tiny insignificant dork. No. So anyway, on my quest to prove that RPG Maker 2003 was Turing complete, I was kind of running into several roadblocks due to the limitations of the program. Like how the only way you can change a terrain tile at runtime is by literally changing every tile of that type to another type. Why is it like this? But anyway, I looked to MatPat's video entitled We Built a Computer in Mario Maker in order to see what kind of machine MatPat built. I used this video's thumbnail in my previous 45 minute long mistake as an example of a computer that was found somewhere where you wouldn't expect it to be. This game theory video, though, is kinda old. It came out in 2019. Oh, that doesn't sound like that long ago? Well, if you're a returning viewer to the channel, you're probably familiar with this guy, Idex. Um, what am I doing here? Well, when Game Theory released this video, Idex was only two weeks old. What? Dude, I'm 16. And stuck in a time loop for whatever reason, so I was 16 back then, too. Oh yeah, and this channel only had like 600 subs at the time. So yeah, that was quite a while ago. And that was also the last time I actually watched Matt Pat's video on Mario Maker. And of course, being the naive gullible 16 year old I was at the time, I thought he actually did what his title was saying. Because if he didn't do what was in the title, then he would be a liar resting his video on the assumption that nobody would check to see if his video was correct or not. Which is something we all know Matt Pat totally wouldn't do. Using height charts and pixel measurements, I was able to find that by comparison, Wario is practically 10 feet tall. So without further ado, let's take a look at Matt Pat's video. I will be leaving a link to it in the description so you know that I'm not taking anything out of context or messing with it in any way. You see, the true measure of a game's complexity isn't just in presenting you with problems to solve, it's in the game's ability to solve the problems on its own. Video games are, at their core, just computer programs, right? Programs built to execute code that takes you on grand adventures. Code is when random numbers in system font, and the more random numbers in system font there are, the more code it is. And when there's a lot of random numbers in system font and code, it's hacksoring. Yeah. But when you're suddenly able to build an actual working functional computer inside of a video game, well, now you've unlocked something that's a lot more significant. You've created something that can run any algorithm or any set of algorithms. In a theoretical sense, it can run any program that your computer can run, including other video games. So what Matt Pet is saying here is that if you're able to build a computer inside of Mario Maker, then you will be able to create something that can run any algorithm. This is true, and it is the thing that MatPat, or anyone else for that matter, will need to create if they want to show that Mario Maker is in fact Turing Complete. For something to be Turing Complete, it will need to be able to simulate a Turing machine. But what is a Turing machine? Well, let's see how MatPat describes it. Spoiler alert, it's not very well, but we'll get to that when we get to that.
So, in its most basic form, a Turing machine, aka the most basic form of computer, needs to be able to do four different things. One, store values in some sort of memory. Two, read and write values from and onto the memory. Three, keep track of where it is in the memory. And four, follow an algorithm, which are basically the instructions that tell it what to do depending on what state it's in and the value that it's seeing from the memory. Now, reduction to a Turing machine is actually how many programming languages are shown to be Turing complete. For example, the esoteric programming language 2A is literally just string replacements applied in a random order onto a start string, and nothing else. But this was shown to be Turing complete by reducing it to another Turing complete programming language, the wonderfully named BrainFuck. BrainFuck is Turing complete because it's pretty much just already a Turing machine. The programs can be converted into a finite state machine pretty easily, and it literally just operates on a tape like a Turing machine does. So, this shows what type of thing you need to create in order to prove Turing completeness. You need to create something that is A, a Turing machine, or B, simulate something that is already shown to be Turing complete. Brainfuck was shown to be Turing complete in method A, and 2A was shown to be Turing complete with method B. With that in mind, this is what MatPat makes. Mario Maker is going to be a lot more limited based on the more streamlined gameplay and tool set, but it too can show off its functionality as a simple Turing machine by running, drumroll please, basic edition. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Mario Maker Calculator. In this level, we're able to add together any two numbers between 0 and 7, and after a bit of auto-scroll, display the final result. I, I can't believe I need to say this, but BASIC EDITION IS NOT TURING COMPLETE! 16 MILLION SUBSCRIBERS, EVERYONE! And nobody calling him out in the comments. I mean, come on. It should be obvious that edition isn't Turing complete. Oh yeah? Well, I don't believe you. Prove it. Are you serious right now? Yes. Prove it or else. Okay. But before we continue, a brief word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a learning platform containing courses on math, science, and computer science. They have courses ranging from basic Python to vector calculus to quantum mechanics, and they're all updated pretty frequently. The lessons on Brilliant are hands-on, so you get actual experience with what you are looking at. For example, I have been learning how neural networks work with Brilliant, and I'm actually getting better at solving problems not just related to neural networks, but everywhere else as well. I have also been trying the Electricity and Magnetism course in order to get a better grasp on those concepts for school. The world needs more problem solvers, and you can improve your skills by using Brilliant. To get started using Brilliant, visit brilliant.org slash truddle1 or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you to use that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Ads like this support the channel and make it so that I can spend more time on videos. And now, back to the rest of the video. So, to prove that addition is not Turing complete, it would be sufficient to make the addition in something that is known to not be Turing complete. And Turing machines are not the only types of machines that can follow algorithms. A Turing machine is basically an extended finite state machine. Those can follow algorithms viewed as nodes until they reach an accept state. You can find lots of examples of finite state machines on the Twitter page entitled Vaguely Reassuring State Machines. It's like the one good Twitter page. But those cannot actually store permanent data. To fix this problem, you might introduce a stack, onto which you can push data and pop data. This thing, called a pushdown automaton, satisfies MatPat's definition of a Turing machine, I think. Yeah, to be honest, the way he described a Turing machine isn't all that clear. But, if you're wondering what kind of limitation a pushdown automaton has that a Turing machine doesn't have, take a look at the following problem. Return true if an input string, given in the form of a sequence of A's, B's, and C's, has the same number of each letter. Now this is actually quite easy to do on any normal programming language. Try it yourself. 
you would just count how many A's there are, count how many B's there are, count how many C's there are, and if they're equal, return true. Otherwise, you'd return false. Now try doing it on a pushdown automaton. I'll give you a second. Oh what, can you not do it, MatPat? That's because this is not able to be solved on a pushdown automaton. Checking whether there are the same number of A's and B's, that's fine. Just populate the stack with all the A's, pop each A for each B you receive, and if you run out too early, or don't run out at all, you would return false. Otherwise, you'll end up with an empty stack, meaning that the number of A's and B's are equal. Now try to add C to this problem. Okay, let's just check this E's against... Wait, the stack's empty now. We've lost all our progress! Yeah, that's because pushdown automata are not Turing complete. In order for something to be Turing complete, it must be able to arbitrarily access the memory. This might be what MatPat means by keep track of where the memory is, but he really could have worded it better because to me it just sounds like memory is being stored somewhere and is able to be retrieved later. A pushdown automaton can store data and retrieve data from the top. But data can also get stuck at the bottom of the stack, and everything above it must be discarded before this data can be used. To solve this problem, you can, well, add another stack. Now, it kinda seems like you're flipping through the pages of a book. And in fact, now it's an arbitrarily accessible array. So one stack is not Turing complete. But two stacks actually are Turing complete. We have arbitrary memory access now. But the question remains, turtle! Can you make the adder with a pushdown automaton? Uh, yeah. Here it is. So, as long as the numbers are grouped together by place value in this weird weave-like pattern, you can make an adder using a pushdown automaton. The way it works is actually kinda similar to the Mario Maker calculator. It adds all the bits together, starting from the least significant bit and going to the most significant bit, and it handles carries. So 1 plus 1 pushes A0 and then carry, which is then handled by the next addition. So MatPat's calculator is not necessarily a computer, nor does it require a computer to be made. Wait, then why would MatPat lie like this in the title? What would he have to gain? Is it just for profit? Is he lying to the public just for profit? <laughs> Game Theory, making creatures cry since 2019. Oh yeah, well, here's what I have to say about that. But also, you need to format the input in a weird way for your adder, so it's not the same! It's not good enough! Well, here's another Turing incomplete language you can write an adder in. Introducing Iterate, a programming language that was specifically designed to not be Turing complete. Iterate was inspired by Bloop, which is a programming language that was designed by Douglas Hofstetter in his book Gödel Escher Bach. In Bloop, all loops are finite. There is always a specified upper bound that is set before each loop occurs. This restriction is removed with floop, which is Turing complete, and any restriction placed on a Turing machine would further be removed with gloop, if such a thing were possible, which it isn't. Iterate is a programming language where the only kind of loop is an iteration with an index over a string. Iterate also has simple if blocks and modifying strings at runtime. But, in iterate, the amount of iterations is chosen before the loop is run. So if the string you're iterating over changes lengths, the position in the string that we iterate to remains constant. Using this, we can write an adder in iterate that does the addition using the algorithm described by both MatPat's calculator and my pushdown automaton, the algorithm with adding place values and carrying. So we have now made an adder using a non-Turing complete system. Oh yeah, well, Prove that iterate isn't Turing complete! Well, while MatPat in his original video said that the Turing machine just needs to be able to follow an algorithm, a Turing machine must actually be able to follow any algorithm that can feasibly be written. So, what kind of algorithm can you not follow in iterate? This one. Yes, I did find the programs you wrote in middle school, Jacob. But yeah, you can't do that in iterate. 
because all loops in iterate are finite, and this program has an infinite loop in it. This also means that there isn't really a halting problem for iterate, because all the programs will halt. So while MatPat claimed to build a computer in Mario Maker, he really just built an adding machine. This does not prove any Turing completeness, since addition on its own is not Turing complete, and doesn't require Turing completeness. Therefore, since he did not build a Turing machine and did not build something that requires a Turing machine, Matthew Patrick the 13th did not build a computer in Mario Maker. But is Mario Maker Turing complete? Maybe, but this video was just meant to show that MatPat did not demonstrate Turing completeness in his video. But hey, that's just a theory. Stop! A computational theory. Stop it! Thanks for watching. Also, I'm just gonna say this. I, I don't hate MatPat in any way or have anything against him. That, that stuff was all just jokey banter. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.